Hi everybody, how you doing? This is Mr. Douse. Um, this is my second video going over um, various problems on the Unit 1 review. Uh, so this first one I'm going to start off with is 17. Uh, it says for 17 and 18, use the midpoint formula to find the coordinates of the midpoint M uh, using the following endpoints. Uh, so um, I wrote down the midpoint formula here already and uh, these are the two endpoints. So the idea is um, if we have two points uh, on opposite ends of a segment, so we have basically segment AB, uh, and we're trying to find the, the coordinates of the midpoint, the point in the middle, knowing that the A coordinates are at 0, 1, and the other endpoint at point B is at 4, 6. Uh, and the way you do that is um, you use the midpoint formula, which is basically you take the X values and you find the average of the X values, you take the Y values, and um, you find the average of those values uh, and you just organize them in such a way that it returns a coordinate because uh, midpoint is a coordinate just like the other endpoints are coordinates. So the idea is what I actually do is I don't actually draw this picture out. I just label the uh, first coordinates as x1, y1 and the second coordinates as x2, y2. And so I'm just going to substitute these values into this equation and I'm going to solve it. But I'm going to solve um, x first and then I'll solve for the y1 second. So basically, I'm going to add the x values, which is 0 and 4, uh, over 2. And you can plug this in your calculator. And if you do, make sure you um, put parentheses around the 0 and the 4. Uh, and then you can divide by 2. Or you can just do it in your head because, I mean, this ends up being 4 over 2. And then what's half of 4 over 2? Or, or what's half of 4? That's just 2. Either way, I got 2 when I did in the calculator if I just did it in my head. So the x coordinate for point M is at 2. And then if I look at the y values, we have 1 and 6. So I'm going to add 1 plus 6. And, and I'm putting parentheses around the top two numbers because I want to make sure that um, we add first before we do any kind of division. And if you go from here, um, you would get, what, 7 over 2. Uh, and that's going to not divide evenly. So 7 or 2 gets me 3.5. And so the y value is 3.5. And so the coordinates for point M are at 2, uh, comma 3.5. And we want to make sure, again, we have parentheses around this. Luckily, the review did this for us. So let's move on to another problem I think would be worthwhile to do. Uh, and that is number 19. Uh, so number 19, I did this in some of my classes. Uh, and I've told all my classes, or I'm in the process of telling them, that there's an error on 19 and 20. So um, if we look at number 19, um, it says the midpoint of uh, segment AB, let's just say AB, not AM, is M is at negative 1, 3. Uh, one endpoint is at uh, 2, 5. Find the coordinates of B. And I've already solved number 2. This is going to be on the key. Uh, but I feel compelled to go over number 19 as well, vocally, because um, I think this is going to be one of the most missed questions on the test. It was last year. So this is kind of giving you a little bit extra help here by me going over this problem. So what I like to do is I like to actually draw out the segment that we're talking about. We have segment AB. And, um, and it says there's a midpoint of AB is, is at point M. So I'm going to put an M here. And I'm actually going to label M as a negative 1, 3. Uh, and they say A is at 2, 5. And my goal is to find the coordinates of the other endpoint. Now, since M is a midpoint here, I'm going to put a tick mark between A and M and also M and B to indicate that AM is congruent to MB, meaning that they're the same, the same distance apart from, from each other. So whenever we're trying to find the endpoint using one endpoint and a midpoint, we need to keep in mind here that there's going to be a common difference between the X values. Like from 2 to negative 1, you subtract 3. And since, we're, since um, 2 minus 3 gets us negative 1, if we apply that same difference from the midpoint, that's going to end up giving me the x value, which is negative 4. And then if we look at the, um, the y values, so I'm looking at 5 to 3. So from 5 to 3, we had to subtract 2. So I'm going to follow that same difference. So 3 minus 2 gets me 1. So the coordinates for B here are negative 4, 1. So that's the answer to number 19. And that's how you need to solve this one. Now this one again, uh, 17, we are finding the midpoint. So we're trying to find the midpoint M. So we had to use the midpoint formula. But on 19, 
we're not trying to find a midpoint. We're given the midpoint. We need to find one of the endpoints, and this is the trick that you need to do to find that. So jumping on uh, down, I'm going to jump down to 24. It says point M is the midpoint of AB. Find the length of AM. So we know M is a midpoint of segment AB. Uh, it's also marked on here that this segment's equal to this one. So we know that this segment equals this one. Uh, and the goal here is, is to find what X is first. Uh, and then we can plug it back in to 3X plus 4. And that'll give us the answer for AM. And the idea is we know that segment AM is equal to segment MB because it tells us they are. Uh, and so what we do is we can use this information and I can just set 3x plus 4 equal to 5x minus 6. Since we know these are equal, we can set them equal. And then I'm just going to solve for x from here. So I'm going to take away 3x from both sides to end up with a positive x value. So I have 4 equals 2x minus 6. And then from there, uh, I've got x on one side. I need to get this constant to the other to get my 2x by itself. So I'm going to add 6. Oops. I didn't mean to cross that out. I meant to cross that out. I get end up with 10 equals 2x. And then to get x by itself, we need to divide by 2. And I get x is equal to 5. So that is important, but it's not the right answer. It's not like, it's not the answer. Uh, so I need to plug this 5 back into this x, because again, I'm trying to find the length of am. So if I do 3 times 5 plus 4, <coughs> 3 times 5 is, is uh, 15. 15 plus 4 gives me 19, and that's the answer. So AM uh, is 19, it's 19 units. And if you want to check your answer to make sure it's right, I can plug 5 into this other one. So 25 minus 6 is also 19. So the idea is, since these are the same number, I know that this one has to be correct. Uh, so if we wanted to find AB, we could add those two together and get AB, which would be 38. Uh, but that's not what this is asking. So ultimately, 19 is the answer. 26 is a similar problem. I'm not going to solve it all the way. I'm going to like do the segment bisector, and then you can do the other part. Uh, but the idea here is it says identify the segment bisector of, of segment JK and, in, and the indicated length. So the segment bisector, a segment bisector is, is like a midpoint. Uh, a segment bisector is what is causing um, the segment to be cut in half. Because bisect means to cut in half. To cut in half. So what is cutting segment JK in half? It's this line here. It's line M. So the segment bisector is line M. Uh, keep in mind here, O is the point right here. M is just a, a lowercase letter at the end of this uh, line. So you can name this line M. You cannot call this line OM because M is not a point. It's just, the it's just the, another name for this line. So you, this is the only correct answer for this. Uh, beyond that, I'm not going to solve 26 because you solve it exactly like uh, I did 24. I just wanted to go over um, the, the segment by sector. Another problem I'm going to go over is, uh, is 28, just to, like a quick reminder. Uh, and then I'm going to do 32, and then that'll be the last one I do. But if I look at 28, um, it says list three different angles using the uh, image uh, provided. Now, you might not see it, but we have one angle here in red that I'm highlighting. We have another angle here in blue that I'm highlighting. Uh, and then lastly, let me go for like a green or something. I have this other angle that I'm highlighting in green. So we have three angles. One's red, one's blue, and the other one is this green one that's not really showing up on here. So green. So let's name those three angles. Um, so I can name the one in red angle DAJ. Uh, or you could flip the letters around and call angle JAD. That works. Now I cannot call this just angle A because angle A is the vertex of all three of these angles. So I can't name this using angle A. But had this just been um, uh, the, the top angle, the one in red, I could have also called this angle A. But since this is part of more than one angle, I can't use just angle A. So that's the red one. The blue one I could call angle JAT. Or you could call it angle TAJ. So I can just switch those letters around. And then the green one I could call angle DAT. Or I can call it angle TAD. Uh, again, you can just flip those letters around. Uh, and then one more palm I'm going to do is number 32. 
it's dealing with bisecting. Uh, and I needed to do at least one of these problems that's dealing with bisecting. Um, and, and, and let me just kind of point out here. So 30, 31, and 32 are all solved very similarly. Um, so bisect means to cut in half. So that means that um, this segment here, uh, FH, is bisecting this angle. So I know that these angles are equal. Uh, bisect here again. So these angles are, uh, are equal because angle JFI is being bisected. Here it's not saying bisected. It's just saying that angle GFH is congruent to angle uh, HFI, HFI. So we know they're equal. But in, in a, in basically what's happening here is, is segment FH is bisecting angle F, uh, sorry, GFI just like it did in 31 and 30. So knowing that um, these are congruent though, because we basically have this angle that's been bisected. Since we know these are congruent, I can set 72 equal to 5x plus 2 uh, to find x, which is what we're trying to do. So since I know those are equal, I can set them equal, and I'm just going to solve for x here. I get 70 equals 5x. Just divide by 5, and x is equal to 14. And that's how I got x is 14 here. So beyond this, uh, you can come to tutoring tomorrow morning, which is Friday. So Friday morning, um, uh, but I'm not going to be here Tuesday or Wednesday. So, um, so make sure you come to tutoring tomorrow if you need to, if you're seeing this video in time. Other than that, have a good day. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.